In this video, we are demonstrating the procedure of bone marrow aspiration and biopsy. Bone marrow biopsy is a common procedure done in our wards. Here, the resident uses a bone marrow biopsy needed to obtain aspirate and tissue from the bone marrow. It is used to diagnose variety of diseases and conditions which involve bone marrow and blood cells. Indications for bone marrow include unexplained reduction in peripheral blood count which can be anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia or pancytopenia and unexplained raised in counts which can be in the form of polycythemia, leukocytosis or thrombocytosis, paraproteinemia and amyloidosis, storage disorders, unexplained hepatosplenomegaly or splenomegaly, fever of unknown origin, disorders of iron storage and metabolism, for diagnosis and staging of lymphoma and solid tumors to confirm a normal functioning marrow in patients who are allogenic hematopoietic cell donors to assess the response to treatment and in research purpose contraindications to the procedure as such there are no absolute contraindications related contraindications include Local site infection, wherein you can change the site of the procedure. Osteoporosis, which is contraindicated for sternal aspirates. Severe hemophilia and severe DIC. In patients with severe hemophilia or severe DIC, the procedure can be performed 24 hours after transfusion of fresh frozen plasma. Thrombocytopenia, regardless of severity, is not a contraindication. Complications to the procedure include hemorrhage which can be in the form of local hematoma, retroperitoneal hemorrhage in the case of sternal aspirates and in coagulopathies, myeloproliferative disorders, patients on anticoagulants and patients having DIC, it is fairly common. Pain of the local site is common which can be treated by giving adequate analgesia. Local infection generally occurs after third day of the procedure, perforation of mesial vessels like the iliac can occur. Nerve injury which to most common being the gluteal nerves can occur during the procedure. Pericardial tamponade, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary infarction, injury to the great vessels can occur during sternal aspiration. Common sites for bone marrow aspiration and biopsy include the iliac bone, the sternum and tibia. In iliac bone, posterior superior iliac spine is the most common site for bone marrow aspiration and biopsy. Iliac crest and anterior superior iliac spine are generally used for bone marrow aspiration. Sternum is used only for aspiration and the sites include second and third and intercostal space. Tibia is generally used in babies because other bones are not well formed and tuberous to tibial tuberosity is most common site for aspiration and biopsy bone marrow aspiration versus bone marrow biopsy these procedures are complementary to each other bone marrow aspiration gives a better cytological details whereas bone marrow biopsy gives a better trophographic detail bone marrow aspirate is a good test for cytogenetics and molecular genetics whereas bone marrow biopsy can be used for the same but it is not very ideal in fibrosis of bone marrow aspirate generally gives a dry tap whereas bone marrow aspiration becomes essential in case of dry tap bone marrow biopsy needles are special needles which are stout and hard with 7 to 8 centimeters in length they have a well fitting stillet and an adjustable guard we gen commonly have four types of bone marrow biopsy needle which includes the Jamshidi needle which is most commonly used. Next is the Islam, Sala and Klima type. This is how a Jamshidi needle looks like and this is how a Islam needle looks like. Both these are bone marrow biopsy needles. 
this is how a salas noodle looks like and this is how a klimas noodle looks like these are both aspirate type of noodle moving on to the procedure before performing the procedure an informed written consent must be taken from the patient and the attendees the patient and the attendees must be explained about the technique of the procedure and its complications a pre procedure checklist must be done before hand only so that no item is missed during the procedure vitals both before and after the procedure must be noted then only we must proceed for bone marrow aspiration and biopsy the patient is generally positioned in lateral decubitus or prone position the pre procedure checklist which includes betadine sterilium or chlorhexidine sterile gauze and plaids sterile cuffs 2% lignocaine with buffer syringes and needles 11 number scalpel jamshedi biopsy needle clean glass slides edta and heparin vacuum cleaners and formalin oil after taking informed consent and keeping all the necessary things ready nearby the patient is placed in either prone position or in lateral decubitus position in this video the demonstration is done in patient being in lateral decubitus position once the patient is positioned in lateral decubitus position the posterior superior iliac spine is located by tracing the iliac crest backwards once you palpate the posterior superior iliac spine the site is marked once the patient is positioned in lateral decubitus position the posterior superior iliac spine is located by tracing the iliac crest backwards once you palpate the posterior superior iliac spine the site is marked the part is then painted with either chlorhexidine or with povidone iodine alcohol Once the disinfectant is dried, the part is draped using a sterile drape or towel. Once in sterile position, palpate the posterior superior iliac spine again and to reconfirm and instill about 5 to 10 ml of 2% lignocaine first in the skin, then deeper to reach the periosteum. Wait for a few seconds or minutes so that the local anesthetic can act once the patient is anesthetized insert the jamshedi bone marrow needle along the line of anesthesia once you reach the periosteum of the bone using clockwise and anti clockwise motion of the needle penetrate the bone you will feel a giveaway sensation once you reach the bone marrow and on further motions you will feel a grating sensation of the bone at this point aspirate 0.1 to 0.2 ml of the blood in a non heparinized syringe and immediately prepare a smear of it if further testing is indicated aspirate more blood of about 5 to 10 ml and you during this time use a heparinized syringe and put the blood or the aspirate in a designated container after removing the syringe close the cap of the bone marrow needle and retract the needle black backwards slightly tilt the needle for about 5 degrees and then insert again with clockwise and anti clockwise motion and with true and fro motion okay, 
use true and fro horizontal and vertical motions to break the piece of the bone marrow which has been present in the needle from the rest then remove the needle along with the marrow to remove the piece of bone marrow from the needle insert the bone marrow stillet from the anterior end of the needle and retract it from the posterior end this is done to avoid crushing of the bone marrow once you have confirmed that the specimen is adequate put a compressive bandage over the site of procedure and simultaneously make a touch smear of the bone to make the touch smear gently roll the specimen over a clean glass slide to prepare the smear of bone marrow aspirate put a drop of bone marrow aspirate on a clean glass slide and using another clean glass slide keep it over the first one and gently pull or slide one over other allow the smear to dry and then send it to respective labs what investigations to be sent and where to send the routine investigation include a peripheral blood smear of the patient smear of the bone marrow aspirate touch smear of the bone marrow biopsy and bone marrow biopsy tissue All of this must be sent to hematology lab, which is located at room number two zero four in New Private Ward. Peripheral blood smear of the patient, the aspirate smear, and the bone marrow biopsy touch smear must be sent to medoncology lab, and a bone marrow biopsy tissue must be sent to pathology lab, which is located in the first floor, room number one zero six six A. Other special investigations include hematology. immunohistochemistry to demonstrate antigens in biopsy like cd34 cd45 myeloperoxidase and cd68 it is sent at hematology lab only other special in investigations include cytogenetic analysis molecular genetics electron microscopy and in pml rt pcr as and when indicated the sample should also be sent to respective microbiological laboratories that is bacteriology mycology parasitology or srb lab and at the end of the procedure the resident must ensure that all samples sent are received by the laboratory and when the report comes he must ensure that the reports are collected This is an overview of bone marrow biopsy performer which is used in our ward.